when the media comes out and says, you know, the corporate press, not, I understand the New York Times, I mean like the Democrat media, MSNBC, no, it's not true, it's not true. It's like, okay, well, I think there's something to that, right? Republicans, and, and, and there have been a lot of pundits who have said in 2016, Trump's going to win the black vote, he didn't. They said in 2020, he's going to win the black vote, he didn't. There's a lot of support right now, but we're going to wait till election day because I think it's fair to say that the 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 record shows that we may see these signals in the press, but they they didn't manifest. To be fair, over the past several cycles, we have seen a massive drift from Democrats of black voters. And what they're reporting now is this is the biggest shift away from Democrats since I think like 1992 or whatever. We have the biggest for the first time since or actually I think it's going way back. It's maybe like the first time in generations and decades the Republican Party is now larger than the Democratic Party. They, they, there's a saying, I saw this in the Wall Street Journal several years ago, that if if the Democrats cannot win at least 80% of the black community, they will lose. And based on the numbers right now, 2024, the Democrats have 78%. So theoretically, if those numbers hold into the election, the Democrats can't win by any stretch of the imagination. I don't know. But you think so. So I was on Piers earlier and uh, Wajahat Ali had made the point that, you know, he made a similar point. We keep hearing that the polls are shifting, but he said it's going to be 88, 12, like we saw last time around, even though. And, and I, I agreed because as much as we are seeing a lot of young black men saying they're going to be voting for Donald Trump, the question is, are they just saying this or are these young people just less likely to vote? It's not a factor of being black. It's a factor of being young. Young people tend not to turn out. You get young people on X like Harry Sisson bragging up a big game about voting for Biden and then Kamala. But then young people still don't turn out. So I'm not entirely convinced, but I'm curious what you guys think. I think of my home state, Pennsylvania, as an example, and people often forget the right and the left are coalitions of a lot of other different subgroups inside of it. And so Pennsylvania doesn't have that many genuinely like woke people. They exist. But the people in California or New York City who are genuinely really for uh, for very progressive social issues, we found from studies they're only between 10 to 15 percent of America's population. Uh, and what happens is if the black vote tilts slightly conservative, and I don't know if it's going to happen this election, but I've noticed a very seismic shift especially for young black men in their culture towards the right. You can see it with 50 Cent. You can see it with all the red pill influencers like Myron Gaines, Andrew Tate, uh, like Lil, Lil Pump's not black, but there's this huge move of conservative rappers. And I have a weird interest in pop culture. This is one of the things people don't know about me, but I was watching this video of this guy who's a Korean, he makes Korean jewelry for rappers and then one of the island boys and they were debating to their and they were both Republicans. And I thought this would not happen 10 years ago. And so the point I'm trying to summarize here is that the left actually doesn't give that much to most black men. Um, they give it to the black ruling class and I can explain that point further. And then the black ruling class uh, is able to co-opt the entire population. But if you got even a relative portion of black young men, you would tilt every single state in the Rust Belt hard red because you look at Pennsylvania, you look at Ohio, you look at Michigan. These are states where the white unions are already going, already went from blue to red. If you got a certain part of the black population, every single state in the Rust Belt would be as red as Texas or South Carolina. I think that's true. One of the things that gets pointed out a lot this election cycle is that Trump is down among white voters than he was uh, in, in 2016 and 2020. And so there is obviously a component to this election in particular where courting racial groups is going to be part of it. True of most elections. Uh, Trump just has, I and mean, this is the Republicans in general right now, has the opportunity to uh, continue to gain among, let's say, black men or the black community at large, among Hispanic voters. And we're seeing these numbers play out as well as white voters voters uh, and really secure a, a victory. This is not true of the DNC and it's not true of Kamala Harris, in part because of the way they treat different racial groups. I think they're ultimately a very racially motivated party, but not in a way that 
makes uh, voters feel empowered. And I think that they would never court the white vote the same way that Republicans are more comfortable doing. And so they are dependent on on smaller segments of the population, but they don't treat them with respect. And that's, I think, what you're seeing with the fallout of of uh, of black voters. They especially the difference between the way black men vote and black women vote. Uh, they are motivated by different things. And ultimately, uh, Kamala Harris maybe can appeal to black women, but she is not able to appeal to black men. And so we're getting this this uh, large scale scolding, which I don't think will work either. But they have no ability to pivot. And and to your point, I think some of that has to do with who's staffed. I think that you're right. A lot of people who are registered Democrats aren't necessarily progressive, but they are sympathetic to progressive causes because of the social acceptance factor. Uh, but I think people who staff these campaigns and who are in the White House are much more likely to be radically progressive in their ideology. Yes. So they can't relate to moderate uh, middle American voters. To what degree do you guys think the attempts to attract the ham fist that attempts to attract male voters actually turns men off because I know yes how but to, how bad do you think that it's at, do you think that it's just a little bit or do you you know because we're we're right leaning people mostly around here do you think that it's just the right leaning people that are kind of like ooh we can see how clearly bad that is or do you think the normal people that are like politically unaffiliated or do you think they're like Bro, this actually turns me off the re I was saying that there's a lot of young men particularly black men who are saying they're voting for Trump simply because it is cringe to say you're voting for Kamala Harris. Yes. It's not even about whether you actually want to vote for Donald Trump or not. It's that if you walk up to your group of guy friends and you're like 20 something and you go, yo, I just voted for Kamala. They're going to bust out laughing being like, what? That's just like the weirdest thing to say. Saying Trump is basically like saying like, I'm on the outside. I'm punk rock, basically. It's kind of yeah. funny because they, they, they don't accept that it is. But when all the major corporations and everyone lines up against them, you're like, yeah, I'm the I'm I'm the bad guy. I'm the rebel. And so you want to vote for Trump. They say he's the threat to democracy, J6 and all that stuff. So when they come out with these ads and they got these guys and he's like, I eat carburetors for breakfast. <laughs> he, he said carburetor, right? Like how many guys are fixing carburetors these days? Yo, I, I, honest question. What what year was the last year cars had carburetors? I, I get it. Like farm equipment, I think, still does. When I worked at O'Hare, they have tugs. Tugs have carburetors. But do guys talk about fixing carburetors? No. It's like someone someone looked up, someone Google searched how to be manly from like the 1930s or fi from the 50s. And they were like, let's just roll with that. Thanks for checking out this clip from Timcast IRL. Make sure to watch the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Subscribe to this channel and we will see you all there.